with the last remnants of dignity thrown down the drain, and I in all their wisdom thought now would be the perfect opportunity to capitalize on the member berries of the husk that is the Indiana Jones franchise. But as a former fan of the Indiana Jones series, before I was introduced to a holy maiden and Indy's modern day replacement, let's look at Indy here. When talking about Indy, you can't go without mentioning Indy's iconic cowboy head which has become a staple and adds to Indy's identity and Bandai seems to have invested an arm and a leg just by looking at the hat as it retains all the necessary details with the brown leather paint job and the peculiar wrinkles found on screen. The hat can also be removed but you have to insert a slight amount of force but great as an accessory nonetheless. But look at the non handed head. Ooh! But their treasure wasn't gold, it was knowledge. I smell bullshit. But if you want an undressed version of Indy's head, there is this cranium only version which exposes Indy's fabulous hair in all its glory. As portrayed through the brown colored hair with a mix of gold hues and wrapped up with a metallic shiny finish, making Indy popular with not only the men but the women and children as well. I have relationships with women. And sex with men. When closely observing Indy's fabulous face, Bandai seems to have a real liking to Harrison Ford's face as, just like Han Solo, Indy here is accurately rendered into Figma form as you have the thick, highly defined eyebrows, Indy's blue and bright eyes, the large Caucasian nose, the well-defined and manly cheeks, the western version of a well-shaped beard, and a smug grin that oozes Giga-chan energy. But this isn't the only head as Indy comes with two additional faces, the first of which is an angry face which, with the enlarged pupils, thicker eyebrows, and slightly open mouth which portrays his inner teeth, making it the perfect face when Indy is facing off against space Nazis. And then there is your iconic smiley face with the delighted eyes, the enormous smug, and the perfectly aligned teeth or when he's bricked up. Moving down, Indy's iconic outfit is also explicitly well defined and abides to the standards implemented by the face as the white shirt beneath is well displayed with the separately colored buttons, the various wrinkles on the shirt, and the titty pockets. And of course there is the iconic leather jacket which just like the shirt retains all of the superb details depicting the film as portrayed through the dark brown color scheme, the numerous wrinkles, and a metallic shiny finish, adding a lot of drip that seems to be a common trait found in characters played by Harrison Ford. But a slight disappointment is that Indy, while having an open chest, lacks the details such as the defined muscles or chest hair found on Han Solo, making Indy here a beta male compared to Han, but still has more risk when compared to the hairless skinny anime boys. Moving to the waist, Indy is equipped with two separate belts, one where it's used to tighten the hilt, as these trousers are spacious, allowing for extra mobility, a common trait among western action characters. The other is a belt to equip various arsenals to Indy's body, such as the holster or Indy's iconic whip in the encase mode, but due to the large trousers, as detail isn't as well refined. And moving down to the legs, just like the previous clothing, retains the wrinkles and spacious fit, allowing Indy to conduct the Zaku kit. And a surprise are the footwear as they are embedded with an almost unprecedented amount of detail found on a shoe, such as the Brooklyn design, the separately colored laces, and even details on the underside of the shoe, making Indy surpass the likes of Mr. Wick and even rivaling Chainsaw Man. When observing what Indy is accompanied by, Indy of course comes with a various assortment of hands. Besides the fist for punching base Nazis, there are your semi-open hands for holding Indy's hat, a wide open left hand for holding the golden monkey, a trigger hand to wield Indy's revolver, and a thumbs up holding hand to hold Indy's iconic whip. Then there's this crossback which you place on Indy's right shoulder for your typical adventure look and is well defined as shown through the various wrinkles and separate colors on both the buttons and sling. Then there's this golden monkey that seems to be South American, Inca or Aztec in origin while having a creepy face. 
to watch out. Then there is Indy's golden compass which has drawings on both sides and a red stone in the middle. Nothing special here. And there's your little sandbag which Indy places in the place of a monkey which is well detailed and a competent melee weapon. And talking about a melee weapon, there is Indy's iconic whip which after taking off the folded variant and then placing the arm version on the hand allows Indy to fulfill his inner 50 shades of grey desires against space Nazis or or pretending to be your typical Asian parent. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! And looking closely at the whip, it holds the same quality standards as the dark leather brown paint job is beautifully applied. Long size engravings organically blended, making for a beautiful armament. And for mid-range combat, it's Indy's revolver that with the beautiful metallic gray is able to pull off 638 caliber rounds into unhostile for deadly effect but it will be more effective in the hands of Mr. Wick. And finally, there are two non-jacket arms that can be equipped by plucking out the pre-existing arms, removing the jacket, and reattaching the white arms, making for a shirt only indeed that has the wrist and added flexibility to carry out gun kata. When seeing how Indy stands among others in the respective line, as a fully grown Caucasian male, Indy is on the fair side regarding fellow Hollywood giants. But when compared to anime characters, Caucasians sure do have their benefits, as Indy stands at roughly 15 centimeters or 5.9 inches tall. Here's Indy next to Gumpla, Hyatt Toys, SH Fig Arts, Figma, and Mr. Wick. When viewing the range of posability that Indy is able to pull off, for viewers who've seen my previous videos, let's just say he's more akin to Chainsaw Man than the other figures. The head can move freely up and down, left and right. Due to the butterfly joints, the shoulders can do the Arms can move front and back freely. Elbows bend exactly 90 degrees, fair range for the hands, the torso and waist having been composed by a ball joint allows for the doggy fair spread fair spread for the legs, these can bend 90 degrees, decent feet movement, and a toe bend. So what is there left to say? The SH Figure's iteration of Indiana Jones is a fantastic addition into the figure line and one of the year's dark horses as I didn't expect this figure to be released but was flabbergasted by the amount of quality Indy retained such as the impressive details embedded on the outfit, Indy's handsome look superbly replicated right in front of me, the vast amount of accessories that are hard to witness in modern day figures, and the impressive range of movement Indy is able to pull off. The gripes I have such as the chest hair and ass are nitpicks which doesn't degrade Indy's value in the slightest. With that said, I would highly recommend this figure to collectors of all backgrounds, especially fans of Indiana Jones. In doing so, I'm going to give SH Figure Arts Indiana Jones a ranking of an A+.